The typical way that genes are inherited is, let's say you have an animal that has uh, two copies of a gene and one is different from another. Um, for one copy of a gene to get passed down to the next generation, half of those offspring would inherit that copy of the gene. And what we did is essentially leverage a technique using the CRISPR-Cas9 system to control the inheritance of one copy of a gene so that it is inherited at the next generation by more than half of the offspring. The ideal goal would be for that to get passed to 100% of the offspring in the next generation. And so this active genetics approach, which controls the inheritance of a desired copy of a gene, would allow that to happen at much higher frequency. And it would let us model um, complex evolutionary traits, complex human genetic diseases, um, potentially to make mice that are better models for drug design um, that could be used for therapeutics in humans. So Ethan Beer and Valentino Gantz um, developed the original method. They were the first to show that it could be used in FLY, this gene drive, this copying gene. And we actually had the opportunity to work with them very closely on this paper. For me, the most important thing is the potential for new technologies that are built out of this. We showed that you can do this copying event in a mouse, and that's actually really important. Because right now, our genetic model systems are very limited to what we can successfully breed together. Combining a whole bunch of genes is very difficult. And if you were able to do it, if you were able to combine all of the different genes that are important and have been shown to be related to Alzheimer's, maybe you could make a mouse that is a true model of Alzheimer's. And the same is true of heart disease. And diabetes. The same is true of evolution. If you want to understand how different animals make different limbs, you really are going to have to be able to combine many different genes into one animal. And this technology makes that possible probably for the first time. Science is always really exciting for me. I have so much fun when I have the opportunity to learn something new. And there's something so exciting about knowing something for the first time that no one in the world has ever known. It was very, very cool for me to see this first evidence of copying in a mouse and to know that it was the prelude to something bigger, that after this, we would be able to use this technology that I had seen for the first time to maybe change the way that we study disease and evolution and development. Every advance you make opens the ground for all of the advances to come, and all I can think about is what's next. The opportunities that what we have already shown open for future research, and one of those is that this very first proof of principle was using some available genetic tools to control the timing of when a cut in the DNA would be made and repaired. And those available tools allowed us to show that this is possible, but they weren't perfect. And so the next direction of our work is to try to improve the efficiency so that you can, uh, at a higher frequency, control the inheritance of a desired gene. And the other thing that we want to try to do is to control the inheritance of multiple genes simultaneously. I think it's really important for the public to know that scientists are constantly aware and thinking about the ethical implications of our work. One of the most important things about this research for the average person who, who might hear about it is um, to understand the real power of the CRISPR-Cas9 system. Because just making a cut in DNA and having that cut be repaired in a way that changes the sequence of that genome that's an incredibly powerful approach. And as we've seen, that there can be some fear about how these approaches might be implemented. But I think the most important thing about our research is that it shows one of the ways in which this has an undeniable benefit to society with the possibility of modeling diseases like arthritis, cancer, and diabetes, so that maybe when the public hears CRISPR, they'll be a little bit less alarmed about the possibilities and a lot more optimistic about these possibilities.